The National Security Research Center has tens of millions of materials. This is the lab's classified library, which also houses artifacts from Llano history. Think of still secret nuclear weapons data, old photos of the town in the 1940s, an old pair of goggles from the testing days, and so much more. I'm Bryce Steves from the Los Alamos National Laboratory's Public Affairs Office. You're joining me as we hear the stories behind some of the lab's most interesting pieces of history. Welcome to the Relics Podcast. These relics come in every medium imaginable. Films, cassettes, photos, handwritten notes, engineering drawings, and just recently, in fact, a very special book, a step-by-step manual on how to assemble Fat Man. Fat Man was the code name for the implosion type plutonium nuclear weapon. Los Alamos scientists created Fat Man to help end World War II. Its predecessor was tested in the New Mexico desert on July 16, 1945. The Trinity test proved a fat man type weapon would be successful in war. It also marked the dawn of the atomic age. The assembly for this weapon is documented in this 149 page book. Authored by a group of scientists after World War II ended, this is the only known copy that remains in existence. It is now housed in the lab's National Security Research Center. How do you put a bomb together? <laughs> How do you assemble an atomic bomb? It's, it's not exactly that straightforward. That's Alan Carr. He's the lab's senior historian. Alan has worked here for nearly 20 years. From time to time, he makes house calls, quite literally going to someone's basement to see if old files from the lab's yesteryear are worth saving. Or he'll hear from retiring staff members who are cleaning out their desks, cabinets, and safes. That's when we got the call at the National Security Research Center. One of our longtime scientists retired. He had inherited this manual from, I believe, one of the original weaponeers. And that's what we call, you know, people who used to put bombs together and help deliver them in combat. Uh, weaponeers. And so he inherited this manual, and uh, it's really an incredible document. You know, it's just page by page. It's, it's, it's well over a hundred pages, very detailed, loaded with pull-out, fold-out drawings, with illustrations, with step-by-step uh, instructions for putting a fat man bomb together. To understand how we got here, we need to go back to the early 1940s and the lab's beginning. My name is Keith Thomas, and I'm a research scientist. The United States was involved in World War II, which was a very deadly conflict, a worldwide conflict, uh, where we were losing, on average, 340 people a day. The United States alone was, which by any standards of today, it's hard for me to even imagine You know those kind of horrific losses. What gathered at Los Alamos was a group of scientists and engineers. Average age, about 27 years old, very young, very energetic. And they gathered here to try to build a nuclear weapon to end the war. And the whole focus was in the war. And all the documents you read from Robert Oppenheimer and and the other leaders, all decisions were directed at one purpose. And that was do what you have to do to end the war. And Fat Man, of course, was one of the products of that effort. Fat Man was one of two atomic bombs developed at the lab. The other was Little Boy, which is a gun-type uranium weapon. Both were released above Japan, just days apart. We don't know who coined their names, but Fat Man is believed to have represented British Prime Minister Churchill, who was, well, a fat man. There was a second weapon called Thin Man after President Roosevelt. This weapon was never successfully developed and Little Boy was created in its place. It's not certain whether Little Boy was named after someone specifically, but the weapon is smaller than the Fat Man bomb. Just think of a bowling ball <laughs> with with some fins on the back, and that's that's kind of sort of what Batman looks like, very basically. Definitely the biggest bowling ball you've ever seen. The bomb was nearly 11 feet in length and five feet in diameter. It weighed over 10,000 pounds. Alan, what does the Fat Man manual look like? So the cover itself is one of these. It's it's made of cardboard, but it's got this green kind of pea green cloth over it. And notebooks and binders of that type, again, the cardboard covered in the, uh, in the green cloth, uh, 
pretty common for the age, uh, especially, you know, it's got a military surplus type feel to it. So that's, uh, that's our outer layer. When you open it up, it's got uh, binding inside. And again, you go to the store today, you buy a notebook. It's kind of like that, except again, with, with old kind of musty smelling cloth <laughs> uh, from the military. But because this thing has been cared for and been sitting in the back of a uh, safe for most of its life, it's, it's in very good condition. It's not tattered at all. And again, although there is some, some uh, fading, although there's a little bit of yelling, yellowing to the pages, it's still in very good condition. In addition to the drawings and the pages with print directions on them, you'll also see photographs. And the photographs are still in very, very nice condition as well. I'm imagining this relic resting on a velvet pillow under a spotlight in the National Security Research Center. Alan says it's actually being stored here in accordance with national preservation practices. The book is classified and accessible to those what they need to know. So Alan, assuming we had the need to know, would this book even be comprehensible to someone who's not a nuclear physicist or weapons engineer? We might not be completely lost, Bri, but I would still not trust myself anywhere near one of those things, nonetheless. Okay, me either then. <laughs> The actual instructions themselves are only about 40 pages of that total thing. The rest are, there's mostly pictures and drawings and sketches. And, and I have to say, some of these sketches are just fantastic works of art in my eye. You know, I sat there and thumbed through it and was just fascinated. This was really awesome. For a weapon engineer, you know, looking at something like this is a, is a piece of our history. It's a piece of the nation's history. It's a piece of this laboratory's history. And, and it's very interesting to me because it sets the tone for what we do today. I mean, in essence, what we're doing today are the same things this uh, laboratory did before. And, you know, in terms of procedures and how we build things, you know, this is a snippet of what we're doing now. You know, how much have things changed? And, you know, as you're flipping through this book, are you thinking like, oh, wow, we would never do it this way today? Or, you know, you're kind of struck by oh yeah, that's exactly what we do. Um, you know, remember we're unclassified, but you know, ha have we deviated a lot from sort of this amazing scientific breakthrough, you know, that happened at Los Alamos, changed the world. Is that still how we do things at Los Alamos? So that's a really good question. And, and the simple answer is yes and no. And, and we've learned a lot in 70 years of doing this sort of thing. And so we've gotten a lot smarter and a lot better and a lot more refined at how we do it. The Fat Man Manual is also a reminder of why our lab was created and why it still exists today. We are here uh, to defend the nation. The weapons program's job is to make sure the nation has usable nuclear weapons to defend us in times of emergency. Um, and these weapons do that, in my view, they do that every day. You know, we, we hand these to the military and they utilize them and they deploy them as part of our national defense. And that's why I'm here. Relics is produced by Los Alamos National Laboratory. Joey Montoya is producer. Bry Steves is writer and host. Additional thanks to Andrew Gordon, Chris C. DeBaca, Lexi Petronas, Joe Gonzalez, Riz Ali, and Scott Falk.